When people think about automation and they think about robots, it's very natural to think about all these things that we've seen in science fiction. And we've seen these in movies and television shows for many, many years. And in fact, even uh, factually, we've seen robots being used for many years in manufacturing environments. Now we're seeing robots being able to, to be applied, you know, even to clean homes, for instance, right? Uh, you're seeing the breadth of application expand. Uh, and that applies not only to physical work, but also to intellectual work as well. We now have machines that are looking at, for instance, more radiology scans than a radiologist will see in their entire lives. And we're seeing artificial intelligence actually being applied in ways that affect us as consumers, whether it's a, a mobile phone that tells us, you know, we need to leave earlier because traffic is getting bad, or in a business context where we're starting to see some of these uh, algorithms being used for customer service, being used to optimize marketing, being used to optimize um, uh, you know, supply chains. And so, you know, I think the corner that's being turned a little bit is where science fiction is now becoming science fact. And not just science fact, it's becoming business fact. And that's when really w w we're starting to see, um, you know, executives, decision makers in the public and pi private spheres start to think, how can we use these technologies in order to improve our productivity, in order to improve our services, and in order to improve our products. And that's really why, you know, no longer is this just something we see in the movies, but it's really starting to be something that we see in business. The right way to look at automation, the right way to look at the potential for automation, is at the level of individual activities, not entire jobs. It's very rare, and we found in our research, you know, less than 5% of jobs can have all of their activities automated by adapting currently demonstrated technologies. Now, when you do look at individual activities, we looked at every single activity that we pay people to do in the economy. 45% of those could be automated by adapting currently demonstrated technologies, which is a remarkable number. But that doesn't mean that 45% of jobs right now can be completely automated. Rather, almost every job has a significant percentage of, acti of its activities that can be automated. One of our findings that people found quite intriguing is something like you know a quarter to a third of a CEO's time is taken by activities that can be automated. And if you talk to a CEO, um, you know she usually is surprised at first and then says, you know what, I would really love that time back so that I can actually do more high value things during those times that otherwise uh, I'd be taking, you know, doing these activities that could be automated. This applies across the board. And so I think there's tremendous opportunity here uh, to improve our productivity. And that's not just reducing the cost of labor, but enabling us to do more. And there are a set of activities which are relatively difficult to automate now. Um, you know, and they include things like managing uh, other people or interacting with uh, individuals in a, in a, in a complex a way that you know, has empathy and understands emotion. Roughly 5% of the activities that we pay people to do require a median level of human creativity. And so I think you know, the glass half full is to think, you know, couldn't we have people spend more time doing things such as exhibiting creativity, sensing human emotion, things that are, are very unique to, to, to the human uh, ability. As a senior leader, as a, as a you know, general manager, as an executive, you need to start to understand these technologies themselves and find out what's actually possible and how uh, these technologies are, are advancing over time. Because there's no industry, there's no role, there's no function that could not be potentially impacted by some of these technologies. And by the way, if you don't understand how that might happen, your competitors will. And sometimes those competitors won't be the competitor, your traditional competitors within your industry. We're seeing you know, new companies formed all the time which are attacking uh, incumbents by using some of these automation technologies. This will affect the top line as well as the bottom line. So you can't, you can't just carve this off and send it off to the, to the technology people. And the first that would, uh, way to address it is understand the technology. And secondly, try to, you know, prioritize, right? You try to understand where in your organization uh, can automation be used most effectively, not only to reduce labor costs, but perhaps more importantly, to do things like increase your throughput, increase your quality, increase your customer satisfaction, all of those business metrics. Um, but when it does come to this process of understanding how to transform processes, this is something that people have been doing for many years. This is the hard work that managers and leaders need to do. Uh, but we now have a new tool. We can bring to bear IT, digitization, and automation uh, as a tool to enable transformation 
Uh, and so being able to understand and envision, you know, from where you are today to how it might be radically different if you deploy technology in a powerful way. I mean, I think that, and then, and then how do you get there? That transition, I think, is the hard part, uh, is, is, are some of the skills that you'll need to deploy as a leader. There are tremendous opportunities here, but there are lots of risks to be managed. Uh, and some of those, you know, risks are cybersecurity, for instance. Uh, again, if you, you know, were able to hack a million self-driving cars, that, you know, the consequences of those errors are, are, are quite dire. So you need to understand cybersecurity. Uh, you need to understand um, how you will adopt as you adapt, right? Individuals, people whose jobs will change. All of us, all of our jobs will change. You know, how do you retrain? How do you create agility? for individuals as well as organizations because these things will continue uh, to move and so managing some of those things I think is important. And then as a society we'll have to think about things like inequality, we'll have to think about things like how do we retrain and how do we uh, create time and, and, and uh, the ability for people to adapt as these technologies uh, accelerate in their development.